Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is March 30th and this is my shop update. So I hope everyone is staying well and staying safe. We are just entering a, uh, what, a two week mandatory stay home period for uh, everyone here in Minnesota, all I guess non-essential folks, which is I think fantastic. We've been already staying home for over two weeks. So welcome to the club, anyone who hasn't then I guess. <laughs> it's been uh, kind of nice, as I mentioned last time, to have at least Lindsay home, working from home. Uh, we're spending a lot more time together as a family. The time that she would be spending in the car commuting, she's now uh, at home with us, spending time with the kids and all that. So there is that silver lining still with all of this, but definitely uh, stay home if you can and stay safe. If you haven't thought about it already, please consider donating any extra PPE you might have to any healthcare workers or hospitals that might need it. They desperately need those things right now. So if you have any extra dust masks, uh, face shields, you know, safety glasses, anything like that, respirators, whatever, please find someone to get that to so they can be used at this very, very um, scary time. So that is, uh, that's what's going on there, I guess. Uh, and I, well, I have been working away here and there. I have a little update here on my router bit cabinet, which is essentially just a fancy display case and uh, a little bit of an update on where the trailer is at. So uh, let's jump into it. It's nice out for once. So let's head outside and see where the trailer is at before we talk about stuff going on here in the shop. So here is where the trailer is at this week. I am to the point of uh, finishing touches, which is nice. So some of the things that are added since the last time we spoke is the arch is just about done. I have only the little feet to add here to the, um, to the uprights. But otherwise, everything else is all good to go. It's all gusseted and reinforced, and it just needs to be ground and cleaned up, which is what I'm working on right now is finish prep, essentially. <laughs> yeah, cleaning up all my, my uh, gross-looking welds and just smoothing things out, evening out all the welds on the deck and stuff like that. I've also added the rear stabilizing jacks. So I added some rings here out on the deck as well as on the front here between those front stay pockets. One of the things that I really uh, don't like about this trailer is the fact that there's nothing to attach anything to within the fender area. So I have no tie down options. Well, this thing only has two, one on each corner here. There's nothing in the middle. So if you wanted to put a chain across the log here, there's nowhere to anchor that to. So having this here in the middle gives me an anchor spot as well as a place so I can uh, attach like a snatch block if I want to pull a log to one side of the trailer or the other. So that's going to be a heck of a nice improvement. So I mostly just have some more time to spend out here touching things up, cleaning things up with the grinder and just uh, making it all pretty before it's ready for coating. So I haven't really talked about that a whole lot yet, but uh, through the, I guess, encouragement of some of you in the comments, I have decided to have the entire trailer hot dip galvanized and I have been working on setting that up for uh, a few months now. So uh, at least now things look like they're going to be rolling pretty soon as soon as this uh, shutdown is kind of over. So things are a little bit on hold right now. But uh, at this point I'm just waiting on a few things as far as legal stuff goes for the release of the video footage of the dipping process. But um, I think it's going to be really cool. This whole thing is going to go in a big pot and it's going to get coated with zinc. So should look pretty cool. I think. <laughs> I'll have more about that uh, later on as things progress a little further. So in the shop this week I have been working my way along on this guy here. Started this back in the fall but uh, I got sidetracked. But this week as you can see I've got the door. I made that. I got that mounted on the hinges. I installed the back panel. I installed this divider thing. So the divider is in there with a stopped sliding dovetail. You know because why the heck not. <laughs> And uh, that's already glued in. So the inside of the case is not ready for finish already. The back is just simply screwed on. I made that in the fall as well. And then the door I made last week. That is a nice mitered frame, which matches the mitered dovetails on the case. So you have a nice flow of the miter seam from the outside of the case all the way to the inside corner of the door. So the only thing left to do as far as before I start getting into the finishing process is going to be to just finish fitting the door the gaps are a little bit uh, off right now, so I just have to tweak that, finish prep everything, and then I get some finish on here, and then uh, 
get it hung and make all the little holders for uh, for router bits. <laughs> this is uh, it's gonna look good in here. At least uh, if you're in the if you have to be in the shop, you might as well enjoy the scenery. Am I right? <laughs> So I expect to see a video about making that thing probably in a couple of weeks. Now, on the last video on the garden bench build, I got a lot of people asking about this guy, the compass plane. So I actually uh, shared a little bit about this thing back when I got it. So let's jump back in time about four and a half years, and I'll tell you a little bit about this thing. Uh, the first thing I want to share is this new addition to my plane collection. Uh, my in-laws got this for me for Christmas this year. Uh, we did Christmas a little early because they are actually in Africa right now visiting my sister-in-law. So uh, what this is, is a compass plane or a circular plane. And what this allows you to do is plane either convex or concave surfaces. So if I were to take, for instance, my template for my radius of my uh, door tops, this is a little tight, but you can see you can adjust the plane so that it actually comes into a curve, which you could actually plane the inside of a curve or a concave curve. And the same thing is true with the other directions. You can change the adjustment. Turn in. And you can have it plane a convex curve. So this is going to be really cool. I'm really excited about this. I've really wanted one of these for a while. Um, my in-laws, they have a friend who actually collects planes. Hi, Matt. I know he watches these videos occasionally. So thank you so much for uh, <laughs> arranging for this to be sent to me. Um, this is going to be great here in my shop. All I have to do now is just finish sharpening the blade and just give it a little tune up. But I'm really excited to start using that in my, in my work here. So this is definitely on the list of tools that are just nice to have. Uh, it's definitely not an essential tool in the shop, but if you're going to be doing any kind of curves, this makes fairing those things super fast and super easy and super enjoyable. Um, so there's definitely ways to fair curves that don't involve a dedicated tool for it. But if you do it a lot or you just want to have a really good experience doing it, the compass plane uh, is, I don't know, fantastic. <laughs> so this is a Stanley 113. It's a vintage one. There's a lot of uh, other vintage styles as well, but they all feature some kind of adjustability on the sole. Yeah, you can get them on eBay or anywhere you can find vintage tools. Pricing on these things is going to vary wildly because it is vintage, but expect to be somewhere over $100, probably, unless you find a really good deal and depending on, you know, how much work it needs and all that stuff. But definitely a fun, very, very specialty tool. It always makes me giggle when I see the, uh, the new trailers tires versus the old ones. It's, uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So that's what I've been up to this week. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is an audio rack by Joe. The shelves are made from chestnut and the legs are black walnut, which are mortised around the shelves. It's finished with five coats of a water-based poly. Next is a tea box by John. John is just getting started in woodworking and the plans for this box were from Fine Woodworking. The box is constructed primarily from Wenge. Next is a plantation chair by Brian. It's made from sapili and finished with CPES and epiphanes. Next is a river coffee table by Irene. Irene started this project four years ago in 12th grade, but only recently got around to putting on a finish. The top is made from bird's eye red elm and the legs are made from straight grained ash. The legs are joined with pocket screws and the top is attached with small brackets. Last this week is a living room table set by Dave. Dave made this set for his niece and this was his first build. It's all done with Morrison tenon and it's made out of ash that was cut down on his property and dried in his basement. So I think that's about it for me this week. Make sure you uh, stay safe and stay healthy and all that good stuff. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today, anything here or back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> I've been working.